Hey, welcome back to Fusion Pursuit, commentary on alternative rock music and extreme sports. This is Kaz, this is episode two, we're back at it again, and yeah, I'm excited. So, I hope you all enjoyed episode one. In this episode, I'll be looking at the Foo Fighters breakup rumor that, for some reason, people believed it was real. And Blue October's album, Home, top track highlights on the Extreme Sports Review. I'll be looking at the X Games Austin 2016 highlights. And Tony Hawk lands 900 again. Amazing. So, let's go. So right off the bat, Foo Fighters breakup rumor. Um, maybe I well I don't know how many people really took it to heart. But I mean, you hear bands breaking up, and uh, it's, it's like an epidemic, guys. Oh, why can't a band stay together? But I get it. Well, initially, I'm not gonna lie. Initially, when I hear when I heard it, I'm like, oh, oh, damn. And then I looked into the video. I saw the video. I saw the articles. I'm like, oh no. No, like Dave is like a comedian at this point. Like you've seen the videos that Foo Fighters put out, some of them are comedic and just, I mean, when I saw the video and I saw the articles about it, I'm like, oh, oh no, no worries, no worries. But when I heard the headline, I'm like, damn. Okay, so let me get into it. Okay, so Foo Fighters may be one of the few bands that may stay intact as a unit much longer. And this story kind of proves it to me. So let me see, this all started when the band tweeted, yeah, the, yeah, start with the tweet first. It started when the band tweeted that there, there will be an official announcement and for fans to stay tuned. The announcement was a funny video poking fun at the rumors that Foo Fighter, Foo, <laughs> Foo Fighter, Foo Fighter, Foo Fighter, Foo Fighter, Foo Fighter. Anyways, so the announcement was funny, it was like a funny video poking fun at the rumors that Foo Fighters were going to split up as a band. So the video announcement they released showed all of the me- the media headlines about their breakup. Very e true Hollywood story type of thing. When you see the video, you know, Dave is he's like exploring being a solo act while the rest of the group sits around discussing who the next lead singer would be. The end of the video just said, For the millionth time, we are not breaking up and nobody's going f- solo. I'm like yeah, like if you, I'm sure when you watch the video, at the point when you see them doing the skits and all that, you're like, okay, no, okay, this is fun. Ha ha ha, yeah, I thought you were breaking up. Ha ha ha, oh, you're joking. Ha <laughs> ha So, no worries there in that, on that front, guys. Food Fighters basically did their own SNL skit about themselves. Just a reaction to what the media was speculating about them. Just a fun moment in history. You can knock that off and be like, clock that off and be like, yeah, that was fun. Fun fun moment in all rock history. How about that? It's a lead singer of a group going Hollywood and just wanting to be a solo trope. I mean, that was basically the trope, right? Lead singers doing their own thing and leaving their band and going Hollywood, quote unquote. It made me sound. It was funny. No worries on that front. And that was it. But it, I would say, and when I'm talking about it for the highlights of 2016, was that in my head when I heard the news, I'm like, what's happening? No. But it was a fun, funny video, and I'm sure whoever thought it was serious had a good laugh at the end. All right, so next, alt-rock music highlights of 2016. So Blue October's home album. I'm looking at the top track highlights. Okay, so the the album is, is a 14 track list. And this would be their eighth, this would have been their eighth studio album, and it was released on August 22nd, 2016, under the label Up Down Records. And I I really don't care that deeply, that deeply, about Billboard chart positions, but just for the purpose of info, its peak position was 19th place on the U.S. Billboard charts. You know, I... I could get into a lot about charts and this and but there's only so many there's there are only so many bands and 
Not just bland, but I guess music in general, because I guess the chart isn't... You, well, you have alternative charts, you have different, you have rock charts, you have all of that, but there's so many songs that everybody can't be number one. Anyways, I can get into that deeper about charts and rating system and all of that, but anyways. So, Home was 19th. Its highest position was 19th place on the U.S. Billboard charts. The album art uh, shows a couple in an embrace, depicting love. You know, the album gives you positive vibes, I would say. Now, diving more into Blue October and my history with them, you know, I was a very angsty teen, and I'm think any time I refer to certain rock uh, classic bands that I grew up listening to, that's always been the thing that I was attached to, my angst as a teenager, and how I tapped into alternative rock music because of that, and the things I went through, and all of that. So I was very, an, a very angsty teen. Um, and a lot of Blue October's early music spoke to me because of that. To know that a group can give you songs like Hate Me and just some heavy songs. Great, lyrically, well-written, but like so deep on, on an emotional level. It, but heavy though, like when I say heavy in meaning and just with such a heavy mood, but in the same breath, produce an album with such positive music that still has deep, you still get that deep feeling, it's a great thing to experience, you know? The album, to me, showcases how life can be turned around from being in a dark place to being on the opposite side, a little bit happier. And I've been in love with, with Blue October's music since I first heard Into the Ocean. I'm just a normal boy. I'm not going to sing, but yes, Into the Ocean. So the band's been around since 95. Obviously, I didn't get into them around that time, but I'm happy I got into them just with enough time to hear enough and follow their catalog and all of that. But Into the Ocean was my introduction to Blue October, and I haven't looked back since. Haven't looked back. Justin on that lead vocals, yes. The tone, the sound of Justin Furstenfeld's voice is captivating and always will be. That's one of the key elements for an alt-rock band to me. The lead vocals. Lead, like, right off the bat, if you have that tone to your voice, because it has to capture that feeling and mood and lead vocals, always. So blocks over have that for me. So, anyway, so this album, my top tracks, actually, were Cole Mix Diamond and We Know Where You Go. Now, Cole Mix Diamond, the video actually came out, well, the video for it came out in February of 2017, and I actually liked it. You know, it's simple really great use of the landscape and I, I like this. So aesthetically, it fit the vibe of the song. I especially love the over the head shots that seem to be taken by a drone. Lots of music videos are utilizing that technology. And I love videos that utilize surroundings, environment. As there's no green screen, there's no added nothing. It's just you go to a location, shoot it, and just make the location speak for itself. And that's what that video did. It was a sunset, and I loved it. Just use the use of Mother Nature. And I noticed over the past few years, I've seen a steady increase in music videos shot on location. You know, not not using that many um, in studio setup. Just using the landscape itself, snowy mountains, beautiful deserted lands, and picturesque scenes and. You can't recreate that. You can, but it's just great to see it in person, naturally. And the music video for this single sees Justin stranded in a deserted landscape, and the other band members are separated from him. The overhead camera shots were amazing. The harmonies, the melodies, the beat. It still remained to be blue and what they do. Actually, the vibe was still there, true to what they do. I liked it. The best moments. When listening to this single, the backing vocals, and, and I'm getting goosebumps as I'm thinking about it because I'm realizing a key thing that I like is that the the mix of backing vocals and how they're used. And so what I loved about this song is the backing vocals. The the song doesn't play in one straight linear way. You know, there are levels to it, from the transition to the chorus, then the backing vocals come in, and then the part where the... oh. And then that electric guitar comes in even harder, like, come on, man, that's like you just mix everything in a, in a nice bowl and you give me a great song, that's what that is. So from Cole Mix Diamonds, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory if you look at the meaning, but you can take the meaning, you can take a different meaning from it, but I'm guessing from Cole Diamonds is made type of concept, right? 
something beautiful can be created from a rough form. You know, powerful lyrics that resonated with me, that under pressure magic is created. And there have been moments and there have been songs throughout um, my standing of Blue October that are inspirational and I can listen and really reflect. That's the thing. A lot of Blue October songs, I can listen to it and be like, I can reflect on my own life and just life in general. And that generally is what Blue October does. And even if they're not doing the very heavy, hate me type of songs, they're still giving you emotion and mood and, and feeling. And they're just in a little bit of a different of a direction right now. And nothing, nothing's wrong with that. I, I, I actually enjoyed it. Now let's get to We Know Where You Go. And in a similar sentiment with Cormix Diamonds, the backing vocals is another thing that I love in We Know Where You Go. It's like a layered cake. It's one of the things I liked about I liked about this single, the like a melancholy feel. If I would initially hear a song, and these two songs specifically when I initially heard it, Gooseys. So right off the bat, I already know top two, yes. So the similar sentiment I had for Cole McDonald's, similar sentiment I have for this song. So this album is like a testament to what I'm used to hearing from Blue October can evolve, like they can evolve to represent a different mood. And as far as I'm concerned, Blue October can produce several albums, each representing the positive and negative moods in our lives, and it works. It just works. I'm looking at Amazon, and the album has a 4.6 star rating out of 5. Not bad, not bad. So, hey, I'm sure at this point, some of y'all have this album. If you haven't, check it out for yourself. At Amazon and all the places you get music, you can also get the vi- the vinyl when you get it through Amazon as well. So check it out, support our artist. Yeah, and for this segment, that's it. All kinds of music. Now let's get into some extreme sports review. Okay, so right off the bat, the first story I'm looking at is Tony Hawk and 900. At age, he was 48 when he, when he did this in 2016. So still had it in him, still had it in him. The raw magic, Tony, failing, 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 and finally breaking through the unbreakable barrier. Okay, everybody, we want to hear everybody in the house right now. Boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, wrap it up. Tony Hawk coming close. Now you can see the look on Tony's face. He's coming up the stairs right now. And ladies and gentlemen, we know that he's trying as hard as he can. But one more time, let's welcome him to the top of the ramp. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, he has given up. He never gives up. That's how good he really is. Remember that. That's how you get to the top. people I would have never made that thank you thank you this is the best day of my life I swear to God best day of his life right here I'm happy to be here with you making history so that was Tony Hawk back in 1999 when he landed the 900 for the first time at X Games and you know the 900 it's like a 900 degrees aero spin on a skateboard ramp two and a half revolution that was in 99 so Tony attempted this trick again back in 2016, and I was watching the video. It was actually filmed by Ride Channel. Thank you, Ride, for that. Tony looked so exhausted after his what, fourth or fifth try, but he had the persistence one, and he finally got it after, well, I don't know how many tries, 20, probably, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure the video was edited down, Ride Channel probably just edited down, you know, but that doesn't matter. He stuck it out until he finally landed the 900 again. This is, so he, if I'm not mistaken, the video just has him, he's traveling to where he's going to attempt it, in his car, he arrives, gets it done, 
didn't get it done, attempted it again, didn't, and every edit and every cut is attempt number one, then that, attempt number two, damn it, attempt number three, da 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 and it went on and went on, went on, went on, went on. Attempt number ten, I don't, you know, went on, went on. Until we finally got a shot of him actually landing it, and he's just, you know. But that persistence, and I'm always going to talk about this because this is one of the things, and I'm always going to talk about it. One of the things I like about love, about extreme sports athletes, is that freaking perseverance, man. Like, you, whenever you're attempting a trick you haven't done before, done in a while, or it's a new trick, even more advanced trick, and I see these athletes come out here, and they go and they practice practice, practice, you go, you attempt it, all right, no, that didn't work, and you're doing it, and you're getting exhausted, and you're pushing yourself, and you're pushing yourself, and you're pushing yourself, until you, fa- until you actually finally land it, and um, that's like, an, like a joyous moment. I continuously am um, impressed when I see that, because you see the effort, like you see the effort, and so that video had so much, so much heart in it, but he was really, Tony really pushing. It's one of the traits I admire about Tony, an athlete, so... When you're determined to get that trick, then you're really going to be hella persistent. So mad respect to Tony Hawk, because after he landed the trick, he ripped off his his elbow pads and walked the hell out of there, man. He was he was like, I'm tired, but I did it. Yes, you know this was a guy that I watched when I was younger. I remember big impacts on me, and just to see him at age 48 attempt it again, try after try, and finally just stuck through it and got it. So I appreciated it. So. That goes down in the history books. Tick it off. Check, check. You know, much credit to Ride for capturing the moments again. And uh, thank you for this coverage. All right, today is June 27th, 2016. And it is 17 years to the date that I landed my first 900 at the X Games in San Francisco. A lot has happened since then in my life. I mean, it's been the craziest roller coaster ride. And it really was the apex of my competitive career. And so. I'm going to try 900 today because I feel like I can and uh, I never thought I'd be doing this at my age when I was young. I really didn't think that was a possibility, but I'm still going and keep going until the wheels fall off, I guess. <laughs> Tony Hawk, still going strong. Love it. And finally, to round out this extreme sports segment, I'll be looking at X Games Motocross and skateboarding at X Games Austin 2016. All right, so there were many, once again, many, 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 many different comps, many different competitions, but I'm looking at the motocross and skateboarding for this. And my standout comps were Moto X Step Up, Women's Skateboard Street, and Moto X Freestyle. All right, so first up is Moto X Step Up. So, Moto X Step Up is basically like the pole vault. It's basically the pole vault of for motocross riders, really. But even more extreme, obviously. As the pole is raised from like 20 feet to 30 feet, and it's higher, higher up. And up, above, the, the riders are tasked with riding and clearing their motorbikes without touching the pole. Like, that's, like, come on now. Amazing. I enjoy watching this type of event at X Games because. It literally gives me anxiety and I love it. You know, because in my heart, the, the, the bike goes up and as higher and higher the pole gets, it goes up and my heart drops when I know they're going to come down and I'm like, please land safely. Every time, every rider, it does that to me. So that's why I enjoy it. So let me see. For Moto X Step Up X Games Austin 2016, oh, this was a unique year. Jared McNeil. And Labor Podmal actually shared gold. How often does that happen? Uh, Jared, max feet he reached was 33 feet without touching the pole and landing it and landing safe, um, safely, successfully. And Labor's, uh, Labor's max feet was the same, 33 feet and the same thing. So they both shared gold for that. Massimo Bianconcini, his max feet was 32 feet, just missed it by one, and he received bronze. So no one received silver for this event, which is one of those things that the way it was going, Massimo and Jared 
and Labor were the top standouts and so and since Jared and Labor basically had the same achieved the same thirty three feet and that so yeah. So there were no silver. Which doesn't seem to happen that often. I think Jared was in here rookie. I think there's a rookie in this. I'd uh, like to give a shout out to Ronnie Renner because going <clears throat> into this, he was actually, I'm sure he's looking for his fourth consecutive goal for this event. Oh, he's a seven time X Games gold medalist, 23 X Games in total at, uh, up, up until this point. You know, but Ronnie, it didn't, it didn't work out. I watching the whole thing. There are moments where it was close, but he went sideways with a bike. Thought it was close, but Ronnie, was it? I'm trying. I'm looking at where it was. Okay, right. It was 32 feet, and there was what, a total of nine of not nine, five riders. And Ronnie, Ronnie's wheel, his back wheel actually, it hit the pole and he crashed. He was like he crashed coming down and. They create, created this big impact on the dirt. He was there, but his back wheel hit at a 32 feet mark, and he just came down. It was it was bad, and his landing it was scary. Like I said, my heart like drops when whenever they're coming down, and he didn't come down great. It wasn't you know other athletes came out. You know other athletes came out to help and clear the path and. That was disrupted, but it it was it's a great camaraderie. It was it's a great you know athletes came together. It was it was it was it was great to see. But on Ronnie's run though, the biggest shock of the of that event, like he got knocked out after competing of the 32 feet. Like he got knocked the f out. It was it was rough. So he didn't get to that point. But this happens, you know. He, he's won three gold. Didn't work out in 2016. He keep pushing and keep pushing. But with Podmall, I noticed he was the only rider to clear the bar at every attempt. You know, some riders hit, attempt the next thing, you get it. But Podmore was actually the only rider to clear the bar at every attempt. He got the crowd riled, riled up on his final, and it's great energy. This is just a showing to me the whole day of people speak about her progression, talk about progression, and at, and at X Games, athletes show out, man. The athletes show out. And progression happens a lot at X Games. And you can see it being displayed throughout the various competitions. And most X is always that. I remember my final take on this is that watching, that's why I enjoy watching it, is that the first rider goes out, clears it, lands, or clears it and, and misses, or clears it and his, the back wheel hits or the didn't clear it. And so they have to get ready to go back again and do it and then did it. So I just enjoy seeing that, okay, the bias is raised higher. Come on. You cross your fingers and they go and clear it. Yes. And if they hit, it's like even more like, oh, crap. But it's really just getting back on the bike and going and pushing yourself and pushing yourself. And that's what this competition is for me. I love seeing that. All right. On to Women's Skateboard Street. So the goal for X Games Austin 2016 for Women Skateboard Street goals went to Pamela Rosa, Silva, Mariah Duran, and Bronze Lacey Baker. Now, for Lacey, of the three attempts given, so you have three attempts, Lacey scored her highest on her second run with a 77.33. And up to this 2016 event, this was her 11th time competing. She's still in a nose manual, she's going across the course. It was cute. I liked it. You know, she balanced on her front wheels for like five seconds. It lasted five seconds, I think. Oh, it was fun to see. Um, it was fun. Uh, Mar- Mariah Duran. And actually, that was actually the one trick I liked. The nose manual. For Mariah, her best run was her first which normally I see, I seem to think that it's always your first one. Um, she got a 78. And, le- and leading up to this event, this was her second time competing, she got in a front side feeble along the railing and a couple of kickflips. So, you know, Pamela, 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 this was up to this event, six times competing at X Games. And she got her highest score of 84 on her third run. So, you know, she got in a front side Smith grind. 
and was able to control and land the grind she did across the course. So she was, to me, more more consistent at that compared to the other 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 skateboarders. While watching this event, um, there's a there's a start and stop because light rain caused a hole in the event. This is coming off of they had the event before this. They had the skateboard big air comp. Um, so it had to be postponed. It was outdoors. And the day before, so I think, yes, this is one of those things where it's a big air competition, skateboard big air, and there's lightning. So they have to postpone that for safety reasons, obviously, and there's rain. The weather conditions can continued into women's skateboard streets. So obviously, you know, just to think about the, the, the wheels, the skateboard wheels, they wouldn't be able to get traction, obviously, you don't want to skate on wet course. So they have to wait till it eased up, and then everybody came out and got a towel and dried the course, and we got back on track. So that was the only thing that happened. Like It wasn't like a free-flowing event. It kind of, there was weather conditions that, I don't know if that caused some people to not go as hard, but... Okay, and to round out the event, Motor X Freestyle, no. So the results for Motor X Freestyle X Games Austin 2016, gold went to Josh Sheehan. And was it all Australians? It was all Australians. So the results, gold, Josh Sheehan, silver, Rob Adelberg, and Clinton Moore got bronze, all Australians. So for Clinton, this was his third X Games appearance, and he scored 91 for both his first and second run. And he competed, let me see, what, three? Let's double check. Yeah, he competed three times at X Games previously before this event, but his freestyle competition is his like first showing at it. He got in, he landed a 360. Body burials, his like full twist around the seat was so quick and slick. When he was doing his body burials, it was like it was like I almost missed it. He did it so quick and slick, and he he did his signature Bundy and the kiss of death backflip. He just literally packed them in. Got it, 360, body burials. He did his Bundy, then kiss of death, like. For Rob, he dominated though on his second run. He got a 91.66. He came out and he landed the Cordova flip. Also landed a kiss of death backflip. Did a California roll and a heart attack. Like, Sometimes I'm just always amazed when these athletes do this. You just really, you just went out there and you just rode and you just really gave it. You literally did, and landed by the way, Cordova, Kiss of Death, California Road, Heart Attack, you just did that. No, he just did it, yeah. And it was seamless on top of it too. It was seamless. And Josh, 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 he finally, so finally with Josh, he scored big on his second run with a 93.33. So leading up to this 2016 event, he earned a bronze medal for the 2011 MTX Best Trick, and at and the two the 2015 quarter pipe. So no small feat there. He dominated this competition. What he did was kiss of death backflip, lazy boy. He did a Superman seat grab, and then ended with a double backflip. Like no worries, guys. <laughs> Um, amazing, amazing, amazing. He smashed it, they would say. He smashed it. So really, those are my standout competitions um, for X Games Austin 2016. I especially enjoyed Motor X events. It's like extreme sports on another level. Like, you know, you thought you knew extreme sports. Like, this is like even more extreme. Even more extreme and, and death this, like... You could really hurt yourself if you didn't execute the if you don't execute these tricks. You're going so far up with that motorbike like you like come on now. No, I personally wouldn't. I'm good with my own skateboard. But I would it would take a lot for me to get on a motorbike. I would love to do it. In a really padded room and do and, and attempt some of these. But that's up man, that's up to all the athletes that came out and gave a good showing at the 2016 X Games Austin. Always a great show, always a great show. Much appreciated. Yeah, 
And so for episode two, that's really what it is. I'm going to go right into episode three, get more into 2016 and what it has to offer. But for this episode, episode two, that was it. So that's the podcast, and here's the wrap-up. So you can check out the website at fusionpursuit.com. That's F-U-Z-Z, F-U-Z-I-O-N-P-U-R-S-U-I-T.com. And you can sign up to the newsletter, get updates on this podcast, get updates on articles, and many more. Social media accounts, Fusion Pursuit on Twitter, uh, Instagram is the same, the same on Tumblr and Pinterest. And finally, this podcast operates under the Fair Use Doctrine. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted. And for further information on fair use guidelines, if you'd like to check it out, uh, you can go to copyright.gov. And credit goes to... For the theme music, Metalania, produced by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech. Background music for the Extreme Sports Review is Highlight Reel and Pilot Error, produced by Incompetech as well. And the transition music titled Rock Intro 3, produced by Audionautics. Thank you guys so much for that. And, well, you know, I'll catch you on the next episode. This is Kaz of Fusion Pursuit, where alternative rock music meets extreme sports. Keep pursuing action, extreme, and the alternative life. See ya.